I am a photographer. I've only been doing it now professionally for about four years. I got my degree in animal science. I was going to be a farmer at the age of 10. My grandparents laughed when I was helping them carry veggies out of the garden. And I said, boy, this is hard work. And they laughed and they said, you'll never make a farmer. And being a woman, being a Missourian, a mule lover, you can't tell me I can't do something. So at the age of 10, I decided I will be a farmer. So that's where I set my eyesight. Went to college, got my degree in animal science, and have basically worked in the animal science field all this time. But I've got a camera at the age of 10. And my mom was a single mom. She didn't have extra money. So if I wanted to take pictures and stuff, I had to buy my own film, and I had to pay for my developing. So that means I was shoveling snow, raking leaves, walking dogs, cutting grass. And so I think it helped me develop my eye when I was younger because I didn't have money to waste. So I, when I took a picture, I made sure it looked like something nice that I wanted to, to keep and stuff. So I think that kind of helped develop me as a photo photographer along the way. And in 2010, we're going to talk about social media tonight. I'm not, I'm not a computer person, so that's why I want to bring to you guys, don't be afraid of computers. Because in 2010, you know, I, first time in my life I ever had a job that paid me for my degree. And my boss came to me and she, we were getting ready to hire somebody and she said, well, Google them. You know, we'll see if there's anything bad out there about Google them. And I, I was, what, 46 or 47, something like that then. And I said, well, what's Google? I, I didn't know what Google was. I was a farmer, you know. I know about, you know, neutering lambs and stuff like that. But I didn't know what Google was. And so that was, I was just introduced to Google, you know, like six years ago. Shortly after that, they laid me off. They deleted my position. I trained everybody. I you know, got the organization up running and stuff, so they didn't need me more. So that's when I cried for a little bit, and then I decided, you know what, I'm going to do something that I really love that I'm really passionate about now. So that's where it led me into photography. I started out with uh, like 24 designs on note cards of my work at the farmer's market. You know, I was there selling eggs anyway, so it's like, I'll try my cards too, put up little cards in. And uh, I've grown now, I've got my my stuff in like 10 galleries in Missouri. Uh, Framations, I think, is one of the best and the best example of a nicely run gallery in Missouri. That's they, Other galleries I wish would model themselves after Framations because they not only promote, you know, they promote all the artists. And they're very active on social media. They've got the new shows every six weeks and stuff. So it's a, that's just a wonderful organization. And Amy and Sarah are both super nice ladies. But, so I'm very lucky to be where I am, and a part of that, as an artist, you know, some folks I realize you, you just create because you love it, it's part of you, and you give your art to family, you know, as gifts and stuff like that, but some folks like to kind of sell too and try to make some extra money, whether you're trying to make a living or you're just trying to make extra income. Social media is a wonderful place to market yourself. When I was a kid, if you wanted to advertise something, we got our markers on poster boards and a sign up at the end of the road. You know, if you had money, you might put an ad in the paper. If you really had money, an ad on the radio or TV. Uh, you know, but nowadays, with social media, you have the potential to reach such a wide market. I mean, coast to coast and around the world. I'm here to let you guys know that it is not, don't be afraid of it, okay? Take it at baby steps. Who here has a Facebook page? Okay, so about a third, a half of you maybe. How many of you have a business page on Facebook? Good, good, all right. I don't know if you can see this picture. It's, I was sitting in my easy chair, and I shot that through the window. And it has become one of my more popular photos, especially around Christmas time. It's my best-selling Christmas card. 
when I first started as an artist, I, I, you folks know about like Fine Art America, where like artists can put their artwork on there, and someone you know in New Zealand can order a copy of your painting and have it you know done whatever signs and stuff and friends and everything. I didn't know about Fine Art America. I knew about Image Kind is what I found, which is kind of like you know not as good, but it does the same thing. Well, before, you know, because I thought, like, Facebook and social media was for kids to play on. So I thought it was, like, for my nephews to play with their friends and all this. Well, before social, I was on social media, I would check my image kind account and see how my images were doing, how many people were viewing them, how many were seeing them. Because I live out in the country. It's, you know, 20 minutes to a gas station. It's an hour to Columbia or an hour to St. Charles. We we just now, about a year and a half ago, got an art organization out in Montgomery County. Um, you know, they're still small and struggling. They don't have near as many members as you guys have and stuff. We don't have the shows and the opportunities like you guys have. So on Image Kind, I would get about 800 hits a month on my photography total. And I thought that was pretty good. I thought I was doing pretty good for being out in the country. Once someone finally convinced me, Start a Facebook page. Show your artwork on Facebook and stuff. I posted this picture, and in less than a week, I had over 2,000 hits. So what I do, and what I would encourage you to do, is like Facebook, or whether it's Twitter or Pinterest or Instagram or whatever, push them, push the people that follow you there where you want them to go. So like if I do a post, I'll say, you can see more of my work, and I'll put my website, you know, www.pencarpet.com. I push them to my website. Because your website, how many folks have websites? Okay, pretty good. Your websites can sit out there and sit out there and not really get traffic, right? But now with social media, so maybe you have a shopping cart, maybe you don't. I'm just now adding a shopping cart to mine because I just wanted, I use my website like as a information place where they can see what shows I was planning on doing, what galleries they could find me in. You know, so I use my website as kind of like my, my library, as my information spot. But people weren't finding my website. You know, you might get people stumble on here and there. But now that I'm posting on Facebook and I say, hey, you want to see more of this? Go there. Okay? So that's how I look at social media. Use it to push them, like, say... I know there's some folks like Serena Bosher. You folks familiar with Serena? She's a resident of Framations. She does not have a website, okay? But at Framations, everybody that's a resident artist there, you have a, a page on their website. So she could on Facebook, she could on her Facebook page say, hey, if you like this uh, ceramic um, ornament that I just made, you can see more of them at Frame Nations and give the link to her web page there. Yes, ma'am. Every one of our members, with the exception of our new members, also has a page on Northside. So if you don't have a website, That's right. send them to your page on Northside. Yes. Which would be northsideartsassociation.org slash and then your name. See, that's, so. that's an excellent opportunity, just more visibility. Because I know, too, like now, um, since I learned about I'm Googling, I Google my name sometimes now. You know, it's like, oh, cool to see it come up and stuff. And it will come up with attachments that things that Fremation has posted. So anywhere that you can get your um, information out there, it's good, except for like your arrest records and stuff. You might want to keep that, you know, on the down low. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What about um, protecting your um, uh, rights to your pictures? Do you have you had people attempt to steal your work? Okay, so, so, Judith has asked, what about protecting the rights to your pictures? What I would encourage, especially like since I'm a photographer, so someone's more apt to um, try to copy one of my images than say if you're posting an image of your pottery or your metal sculpture, okay? And then as a painter, you're afraid, you know, that someone is going to copy that. For one, you want to get the information out there. And if someone really wants to copy and steal something, they're going to. It's just like one of my images. They could go into Framations. They could buy uh, Sophia as the, the smiling donkey that's done very well for me. She's a, um, yeah, a godsend. I'm very lucky I took that picture. 
But uh, they could go in there, they could buy one of those images because it's high quality. They could go over to Walgreens and they could start making copies. And then they could start selling them if they wanted to. So if somebody really wants to steal something, they're going to. But say for the sake of on social media and stuff, what I do, I lower the image quality. So for one, and I think, like say if you post something from your phone, like if you took a picture of your painting with your iPhone, when you load it up on uh, Facebook or another social media, it almost automatically resizes it anyway. But just to be safe, I always size it back a little bit. So if somebody did copy it and print it, the pixelation would be, you know, they, they could just tell it's not nice. The other thing I also do too is I have a real cheap program that allows me to watermark. So sometimes I watermark my photos, sometimes I don't. It just kind of depends. If I think it's something really nice, you know, I'll put a watermark on it or something. But the thing is too, people who really want to, they could crop that out. You know, or some people put them in the middle and put them like white. Kind of ruins the image a little bit from viewing. And also, too, anybody who's good on Photoshop can go in there and Photoshop that right out. So, again, if someone really wants to, you know, steal something, they're going to. Okay. That's a, another, leads to another great thing, too. Who loads up images of their work on the Internet, on Facebook or something? Okay. Do you guys rename your files? Yes. Okay. Do you? No. Do you, sir? We rename your files. Yeah. Okay. You know, when you take a picture and you load it into your computer, your computer names that file like IMG-243. Okay. 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 Rename those because otherwise when you post it out on the internet, it is floating out there as IMG-243 or whatever. Who cares? Doesn't mean nothing. Rename it. Like I can rename all of my temp car. If I want to put an underscore and put, you know, summer rain or or you know sheep or whatever, but it says Kim Car, Kim Car, Kim Car. So they all have a landing spot. So all these pictures that I'm posting with Kim Car, they start grouping together. Now, if you Google Kim Carr, you're going to get this ugly looking guy come up because there's a senator named Kim Carr. And so it's my goal to someday beat this senator because I know he's got paid people doing his social media for him. I don't. Yes, ma'am. So you don't just put the title, you always put your name. Put yes. your name because your title, give me one of your titles. Oh, the violinist. The violinist. Okay, that's, that's great. I have one called the fiddle. You know, they're going to be even floating out there with a billion other violinists or a billion other fiddles. So put Nora to underscore the violinist. Okay, because Nora, Nora, Nora will all come together and then you'll see, you'll see the violinist, the iris, you know, the cow in the field. So yeah. do your name. Yeah, definitely use your name and stuff. And, and that's and one thing, too. Like, say with social media, um, you know, and a year from now, Facebook is probably going to be obsolete or on its way out. Rising right now is Pinterest, uh, Instagram. It's always going to be changing. So can I tell you which site's the best one to be on? No. Find one that's good for you. I try to juggle a Twitter account and another kind. It gets to be too much. So pick one, start with that, and, and, and build it up. Okay, you don't feel like you gotta do everything all at once. One thing, you want to do a business page instead of your, just a personal page, because on your personal page, you know, you get on there, you're sharing recipes, you're sharing, oh, the car show that you went to, you know, oh, I went to the doctor's and got a corn removed off my foot. You're, on your business page, you don't share that stuff. It's strictly business. It's strictly your art. And on your personal page, like I got a friend request the other day from somebody who I don't know. He's friends with someone I know, but I don't know this guy. And I went and kind of researched him a little bit. Well, it's all this political stuff. And I was like, eh. 
if he likes me for my art, but doesn't, he doesn't like me because I don't know him, if he likes me for my art, he can like my business page. Because on your business page, they don't have connection to your personal page. So you can go ahead and post the recipes and post about your grandkids. The two will not intermix. And on your, on your business page, you get likes. Instead of friends, you get likes. And you want everybody in the world who wants to like you to like you. Okay, on your personal page, you're going to be more selective. Yes, ma'am. So what do you name your business page as opposed to naming your personal page? Okay, well, your personal page is probably Nora, and I don't remember your yes. name. I'm sorry. So on your business page, do you have a business no. name? Okay, well, and you're a painter? Yes. Okay, so name it Nora, whatever your last name is, you know, just say painter. You know, like mine is Kim Carr, photographer. You know, just name it, add that little extra bit on there. And then also, too, you know, like your avatar, the picture of you, the little square, make sure it's different than what your personal page is. Because I had a friend that she had hers the same on both, and she got confused all the time as to which page she was posting on and stuff. So make it a different picture so that in your mind you know which page you're on and stuff. And from your business page, you know, as an artist, we think about me, 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 right? Because I need money, yeah, you know, I'm not a big corporation, I, I need money for me. But if you embrace, like, look at this group of people here that you get to network with, you know, every month. If anybody here had a business page, if you would go and like their business page, because they're a fellow artist, someone you like, someone you care about, someone you'd like to follow and see new works and stuff, like the North Side Art Association's Facebook page, like any galleries or shops that you're in, like local businesses or whatever that uh, have art shows or like the coffee shop that has artwork, anything like that. Like the other businesses because some days you don't feel like posting, right? Some days it's just like, well, I can go on there and I can check and see what everybody's doing, but I don't feel like sharing something. But on your business page, if you've gone and liked other art organizations, even the art museum, um, you know, like I said, fellow artists and stuff, you can, you can just take one of their posts one night and share it instead. So it keeps your Facebook page active without you having to write posts every day. You know what I'm saying? Plus two, the more activity you show, the more visibility your page will get. Facebook has gotten, you know, how much money do they have? Billions and billions and billions of dollars. Well, they want more money. So it used to be, say, like if you had 100 people liked your page and you posted something, it would go into 100 people's news feed. So when they got on their computer and they're going through all the things they've liked and stuff, it would show up in their news feed eventually when they got that far. Facebook's not like that anymore. Now they show it to 10 people, maybe. And if you get a couple comments or a couple likes on it, then they'll show it to a couple more people. You know, you get a lot of comments, they'll show it to more people. So the thing with Facebook is to try to like other people's stuff on occasion. Don't like something if you don't like it. You know, there's no sense in that. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you going to say something? No, go ahead. I noticed that a friend of mine kind of, for fun, we're doing like a little movie review thing, kind of like we call it the Oliver Axis. Uh -huh. And at the bottom of it, because um, we're only being able to get out to so many people, but what you're saying is what Facebook did. It says expand your, your base, and they want you to pay to expand yeah. your base. Yeah, yeah, the, Facebook does have the thing now, because they, they do, they want money. And you know what, we're starving artists in here. Well, I'm not starving because I'm a farmer. But, you know, I mean, we're just little people. We're not, you know, the Ansel Adams Gallery or, you know, Coca-Cola or some big corporation. So we don't have tons of money. So when it comes to spending money, you want to be selective. Right? You're not just out there throwing money out. So on Facebook, I haven't paid to boost any posts yet because I haven't had anything that I thought I wanted to put money there. But I have had some people say that it did help. Like if, say, they had a show coming up, a big show that they really wanted um, people. Because you can apparently target, you know, people in the St. Louis area. And instead of it going to people in, you know, 
Tennessee and stuff like that. And it, it can target people in your area. So, so paying for, to boost a post, you can. If you get the money and want to try it, you know, it's, it's an option. The other, yes ma'am. If, if you write somebody's page, mm -hmm. like we are doing again, will, will whatever they post then come onto your it will not post onto your page, it'll post into your news feed. So just like your personal page, look at like your page is your personal page where it's things that you've posted, right. you've shared your recipes, you know, events you're doing, stuff like that. Your news feed is all the folks that you that you're friends with, things or businesses or pages you like, that's what shows up in your news feed, right? So like, you know, your cousin. You see what they've shared and stuff like that. But would it be the same for your business page? For your business page, same thing. Your business page is only going to have what you have posted on it. Okay? But you have a news feed there, too, where you have liked the different galleries you're in. Um, you just did Queen Park. Um, they have a business page. You want to like their business page. So, like, when that show's coming up in the fall, you know, a month or two before, you start grabbing their post. And you share it. Even if they're sharing about another artist, say if they feature another artist, you share that on your page and say, hey, I'm going to be at this show too. Come see me. Because they've already written a post for you. They've made it easy for you. And that's another thing too. Like instead of just me, 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 if you share other artists' work, like, uh, um, okay, like I've got a show coming up this coming weekend up in Sedalia. I think there's like 30, 40 artists in it or something like that. I list all the artists. And I'm also a member of the Best Missouri Hands, and I do their Facebook page. So I'll put, you know, next to their name that they're Best Missouri Hands artists and stuff. Because those people have followers. I know that there's, you get folks that like your work. And if they know that you're doing a show somewhere or something, they're going to come out and support you, right? So... If they see, like, uh, say Ken Ferris was in the show or something, you guys know Ken, you like him. You see his li his name listed in with those four of the other artists. You, you might not know the other artists, but you're like, hey, Ken's going to be at this show. This is close by. I think I'll go see that. You know? So it other artists are trapped. It's just like I've noticed the uh, and posts from galleries and stuff. Uh, is anybody familiar with Bluestem up in Columbia? They're a very nice gallery. I will tell you they don't do 2D art, so sorry. But they are a very nice gallery. They were posting just artwork. Like they would post a, a wooden bowl and say, hey, come to Blue them, see this and other stuff. Or they'd post a metal sculpture. Well, once they started seeing the post I was doing for Best Missouri Hands, because I identified that artist. I say, come see this wooden bowl by Stanley Boyle and the other artists we have and stuff like this. They have started now listing the artist's name on their their postings because it draws more people. When that per when people see who that artist is, you know, they might have liked that artwork, but when they're like, oh, that's Judith's work. I like Judith. I love her work. I want to go up there and see what they got there. You know, so don't be afraid to mention other people, to mention other galleries. Uh, like Sally Mountain down in Herman. They took a picture yesterday. They just changed locations. They, they uh, do leather work. And they just sold their first leather purse out of their new location. And the lady happened to be standing right next to my car rack. And so they shared this picture of the, this lady buying this new purse at their location. And so I took that post and I shared it. I said, hey, go see the gals at their new location. I gave the address and stuff. And I said, and you can find my note cards there. You know, so work your, you can work your stuff in there too. You know, for a nation share something, you know, you can say, hey, and I'm in a show there this month. Go see the show and check out my work too. You know, so make it work for you. One of the other things too that's real nice now that I've discovered about Facebook, uh, you can schedule your post. So, because not everybody wants to be on Facebook every day doing post. What you can do is, because I do the, the page for the Best Missouri Hands, we've got over 400 members. And so I 
try to highlight every member. So I'm rotating things. I keep a list and I check their name off when I've highlighted them and stuff. But I don't want to be on Facebook every night doing that. So what I'll sit down and one night and I'll put like together 10 or 12 posts and I'll schedule them. So like while I was here tonight, I posted on Facebook. But then I made up a post a couple days ago about an artist, you know. So you can schedule posts out like that too, which makes it very beneficial to your time and stuff. The other thing, on your Facebook page, what I would recommend, because we don't have tons of time, so everybody in here is a 2D artist. Is everybody a painter? Or a pencil? Okay. I would get out your iPhone or get your camera or something and get, you don't have to go get professional images because this here is not your trying to jury into a show. This is your wanting to get people to spread your work. You don't want to put up lousy images, but get some images of your work. And in Facebook, you can make albums. So you can have an album of, um, you know, say pastels, an album of oils, or like an album of winter, an album of farm animals, whatever. But load up an album of your work. And because then, someday too, when you're tired, you don't want to mess around with trying to grab a post, grab one of those images. You've already got it there, hit share. Or you can hit share the whole album. Renaming your images, like I said, helps. When you build those images, go through there and take the time because under each image it has like where you can put information. Go in there and go ahead and put, say, like uh, um, if Amy was posting for Framations or something and she had an album of work from uh, the photography show. List, you know, what show it was and list Framations, the address, you know website link, anything like that. So if someone takes that image and shares it, that information goes with it. You know, because otherwise, if, like say if I post a picture with my phone, someone shares that, there's really no information going with it. So I like to build albums. If I, if I post multiple images, it will only go with like one image. Yes, sir? What are the costs of business pages? Business pages cost absolutely nothing. And you, but you do have to have a personal page to build a business page. And your personal page, you don't have to be active on it or anything, but you have to have a personal page to build a business page. Costs nothing. As you go up in the right hand, there's a little drop down arrow, and it'll say create a page. Go to that, and it'll walk you right to it. It's as simple as can be. You can have one up in five minutes. I created a page for the you know, singers and movies, but that, that was free. But I didn't know. Yep, and you can have as many as you want. And like I'm, I'm the manager on, I don't know, four pages or so. I help people set up Facebook pages and get them started, and then I remove myself after they get going and stuff like that. But you know, if I wanted to stay on those pages or if they wanted me to, I mean, I could be, you know, uh, I think it's unlimited. I think it's unlimited. You know, so if you got different kinds of projects going on, build a page for each, you know, project. Yes, sir. Um, so so Northside Art Association has a web page that we pay a hundred something dollars a year for. Um, why don't we go to just put it on Facebook? Well, because a website. Is there an advantage or? Yeah, a, a website really kind of legitimizes you. You know, I mean, it it makes you you know, a legitimate business and stuff, and it's a landing um, place. But I mean, there's a few reasons why. Okay. One, Facebook is, whatever's at the top stays at the top. It doesn't stay at the top. As you post new things, it's continually changing what's at the top. So, like, if I want to put where, <laughs> have a static page where it shows what we're doing Okay. So, I mean, it's a place where you can specifically send someone to that's not going to change. Right. So, like, I couldn't create a member page for all of our members on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could create right. a business page, but it would all be linked under my name. I don't want it all under my name. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, 
and, and the other thing too, a year from now, we don't know if Facebook will still be around. You know, it's just like when when I first started hearing about kids playing on the internet, it was MySpace or something. You know, that's not even around anymore, is it? You know, yeah, it is. But it is okay. My so, wife argued for to get me to, to put a give her a Facebook page for over a year so that she could see pictures of her nieces and nephews and so on. But yeah. Because they only use Facebook. Right. Because they're kids. Yeah. So now that I did it. She has several hundred of these posts that she has that she goes through that are meaningless. So well, I'm I'm vindicated. Facebook is no good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? You can get sucked into it, and there are some people that they just don't have the willpower to not read every post. Uh, me, I I must I must you know I go through and find what I want to know and stuff because for one. Um, another reason to have a Facebook business page if you're an artist and really want to promote her, we've got an artist, I don't know if you guys know Catherine Miller, uh, she's a glass artist, she's got uh, work over at uh, Stone Soup Gallery and uh, Chesterfield Mall, does wonderful work and she's starting these new uh, glass pieces that look like bird's nest. Uh, she's doing glass bowls and she's using some kind of powder and stuff like that. And she's posting pictures. And when she, and also too, she does like glass work where the pattern kind of looks like a giraffe or something. And But she's got different colors and so she shines lights through them. When she photographs them, it is, the photographs are stunning, okay? But she doesn't have a business page. And so she posts this on her personal page. As a West Missouri Hands artist, she's a, she's a jury member too. I want to share her post with our other members. Because as a private, because it's a personal page, she has her privacy settings set so that not everybody can share and not everybody can see her stuff. So it's a pain in the patootie to share her work. Now, like my, my personal page, I have it to where anybody in the world can see. You know, because I want to get my work seen. So someone could take one of my posts and they could share it onto another page, no problem. But a lot of our members, you know, and, and good top members, like Jeff Walker, he's the uh, master potter at Silver Dollar City. He's a best misery hands artist. He shares stuff. He doesn't have a business page. And if I try to share his work, he just did some new stuff the other day. I tried to share it. Privacy setting wouldn't let me. So what I have to do in that case, and I and someone can get around that if they want to, because all I got to do is right click on his image, hit save to my folder, copy his text, and then I go over to the Best Misery Hands page, I put that image in, and then I paste his text in. It takes longer, but I can still do it. So, you know, but we're also friends. Now, if I wasn't a friend, I don't know that I could do that. I haven't tried that on somebody you know, but but that's a business page is a very good thing to have. But yes, you still you still want to have that website because, like Amy said, for one, all of you guys can have your page with your work on there too, and so for you, we'd love to do that on Facebook. But Facebook is a wonderful thing because you constantly can push people in the directions you want them to go, or you can announce that you're doing a show. Like you, Amy listed all these shows that you guys have opportunities for. You know. Like, I know Judith was just at Queenie. You know, she can post on her business page, you know, I'm going to be at Queenie. But do me a favor. We've got uh, uh, an artist. She will post the day of the show. Come see me. I'm a farmer. I don't do anything spontaneously. I have to know in advance. So if you got an event coming up or something special... Give people some notice. Say, hey, you know, in three weeks I'm going to be doing this. Hey, in a week I'm going to be doing this. Hey, don't forget this weekend I'm going to do this. And also, too, um, I'll send you the slideshow. I've got a post in there. Uh, these we got some new members, and I know they want to sell their work. They're not wanting to just, you know, give it away as gifts. They want to sell, and they want to make a living from it. Uh, they're called Copper Colorist, and some of you might have heard of them before, the son-in-law is taking over the business. And so they, they do copper things and then they flame torch it, I guess, you know. So they've got a bunch of animals. And so they posted this picture of all these animals the other day that was really neat. Come see us at the farmer's market tonight. 
and the Ozarks. Okay, that is perfect for their mom and their grandma. That's who's going to come see them. Okay, come see us tonight at the, you know, Waka Cola, whatever, Ozarks Farmer's Market on Cherry Street and, you know, uh, whatever little town is down there. Market starts at 4.30, runs till 6.30. You know, give people, uh, you know, a, a reason to get excited. Uh, give them the knowledge that they need to be able to go to your events or to come to your shows. If, if you don't know the things, put the link to the show or something where they can go to a website and they can get further information. You know, but that, that drives me crazy when... When people, you know, you're, you're not really trying to market if you just say, hey, I'm going to be at the show on Cherry Street this weekend. Come see me. Yes, ma'am. Can you make an event from a business page? Yes, ma'am, you sure can. You, you can make an event and you can invite everybody you know on there. And, uh, um, that, and, and that's a good, solid thing because then it shows up and people can, you know, either then accept your invitation or they decline it or they can say maybe or they can ignore it you know the thing never feel bad about posting on facebook because i know people are like oh i feel bad i share my work all the time i share my work all the time well you're not in their living room with them you're not saying hey look at my post look at my post they have the option they can scam over it you know or they can say hey what what are they up to this weekend did you have a question i was going to ask you the two questions um, I don't even know how to put my picture on a computer, so much less my artwork. Um, on Facebook, it's got a blank, it's got a blank face, you know. But what I was going to say, what, how do you feel about LinkedIn? You know what? I have a LinkedIn account um, that is geared more towards your business people. I get on there once every three months or so and accept things and stuff like that. I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, if you've got time and, and it's kind of like having your resume out there. Yeah. Um, well, I feel bad because everybody's writing, put me on your LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I don't know how to do that. I don't even know how I got, got in there to start with. And I'm yeah. thinking, I got all these people getting mad in Florida, uh, Montana, and I don't know how to do it. Well, the, the first thing is, don't worry about them. You know, and don't, first thing is, is don't well, stress don't over it. About it. I yeah, yeah know. don't stress. But those things are easy enough. If you, uh, you know, do you have anybody in your family that can come over and sit down with you for a little bit and walk you through some things? Because once you get in there, it's really not as intimidating as it seems if you take it a little at a time and stuff. But but for your work, for to, to get more visibility, LinkedIn probably is not the site for that, um, but it doesn't hurt to have a LinkedIn page. Do they show their work on that? You can. You you can. See, I don't know what they do or not. They just say, so-and-so has has LinkedIn to the such and such, and I'm going, great. You know? <laughs> I, I will tell you what, what, what I've been told here lately, because things are always changing, that... Uh, Instagram or Pinterest are probably the places. If you're if you don't have anything yet and you're just starting out, that might be where you wanna get started at. For one, say like Instagram. Say you have a hundred followers, your stuff is going to go in to a hundred. Those hundred folks' news feed and stuff. They're not gonna get hidden and stuff. They've not gotten greedy and everything like Facebook so far. But I also understand that they are now owned by Facebook. So that may change. But another statistic I heard a couple weeks ago, too, was um, Facebook folks are uh, gawkers or whatever. You know, they're lookers, where folks on Instagram are shoppers. So... Yes, that's that's the statistics is what they're showing. People on Instagram are more apt. Did you have a question, sir? Yes. Would you ever put your work on eBay? You know what? I personally wouldn't, but that's not to say that it's not right. And, and, and just like Etsy. 
you know, that's not to say that it's not uh, the right situation for other folks. I don't have time to mess with that. I'm still struggling trying to get my website, you know, with the shopping cart and stuff like that. Um, and, and that's, I know a lot of jewelry artists are on Etsy and stuff like that. I've also heard, too, that they recently have changed. Um, it used to be, it had to be like American made. Is that correct on Etsy? And now they've opened it up to imports. So I, I hear a lot of artists are upset with Etsy and they're jumping ship there and stuff. So um, I would think of just social media as a an extra tool in your box that one thing that I like about it is because I can do it at home in my pajamas on my time schedule. You know, and as of right now I'm not paying for it and I don't think I ever will. You know, but you have the potential to reach so many people that if you've got the time and a little bit of, you know, curiosity about it, I would encourage you to look into it and to take advantage. Because you, you don't have to jump in and say, okay, i got to post every day. Don't stress yourself out. If you post once a week, that's good. You know, as long as you're active on that page, that your friends or whoever likes you sees that, okay, well, I know, maybe on Fridays you can post, you know, your painting of the week or something. And your folks, your friends, they, your followers, they know to look for that. You know, I kind of try to break my post up a little bit. Like, I'll do a photo of the day. I don't do one every day, but I'll do a photo of the day. Then I'll, I might share an artist spotlight that I read from another um, site. You know, if there's an event coming up from somewhere else, I'll share that. So I don't, not every day am I posting about myself. I kind of break it up so the people that follow me are like, well, Kim shares more than just her work. You know, I like following her page. There's some interesting things on there. You know, but people want to see your work. And if you show pictures, if you get someone to take a picture of you painting or drawing, people eat up pictures when the artist is in the picture. So they can see you creating that next place piece, or even take pictures of stages. You know, take a picture of here's my blank canvas in my studio, and here's the picture of what I'm going to paint or whatever. Then next week, post a picture, you know, here's halfway through or whatever, and then here's finished, and then here it is hanging on the wall of so-and-so's house who bought this. You know what I mean? You know, people like to see what you're doing. They're, they're, they are genuinely interested in you as an artist. You know, and they want to hear your story. They want to know your story. I'll be at an art show, and, you know, I've got, you know, the card racks. They look like they belong in a store. And people will walk by and they'll look, you know, and they're, they're, they're kind of like headed on their way past me. And I'll say, I took all of those pictures. And they'll stop and they'll be like, you, you did? And I'm like, yes. You know? And I'm like, that's my chicken, uh, Big Red. You know, he lives uh, uh, in the big house. He's got a bunch of girlfriends and stuff. And, you know, he runs around all day and chases the sheep and stuff like that. And they start talking and we get engaged and stuff. And the next thing I know, they're buying cards and stuff. You know, so they like my stories. You know, when they first walk by, they think, you know, I've gone to the dollar store and I bought a bunch of cards made in Japan or something and stocked my when they find out I actually took those photos, it becomes comes of interest to them. So that's the same thing with having a some kind of social media site. You can tell your story. What is it that inspired you? You know, why do you do what you do? Um, how long have you been doing it? You know, what's your favorite subject matter? I mean, share these things, you know, because you want people to get connected with you and your work. Because, you know, I mean, if, like I saw outside here, they have a, a, a community garden. You, you see more and more people are getting back to caring about what we're eating, right? We want to know more about where our food's coming from now and stuff. Same with art. People want to know where they're, that piece of art. It means more to them that they can say, hey, I got this from this artist and, you know, the Northside Art Association and stuff, and here's their story, blah, blah, blah. Then say, yeah, I got that at Walmart, you know. <laughs> so so they're, they're willing to pay more for real art, too. 
you know, knowing that it was created by a real person. It wasn't, you know, by some machine. So, with social media, that allows you to do that. Yeah. Is there any place on the internet that you can go and get information on how to do any of this? Yes, ma'am. Google will help you. I mean, if they, and if you have specific questions, I put a few business cards out there. Call me or email me. I had a lady from a presentation last week ask me, well, how do I do this? And I went through the instructions, told her and stuff. I will be happy to help you. And like I said, you know, not that there's really instructions on here, but I will send this slide show to Amy and she can send it to everybody. But your best bet is if you've got a family member or a friend that helps you out. Well, you know what? <laughs> Is it your kids? They're experts. That's the whole idea. Are they right, your kids or grandkids? No, 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 no. And I'm, I'm saying, show me. Right. Well, you know what? And that is a problem because a lot of times people will do that instead of sitting down and taking time with you and showing you, they'll just do it themselves and then you. you and know, I haven't learned anything. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. I have to, you know, do it too and go through it because, you know, I can read books and it goes. Right, like that. It's so, a shame how many experts I have in my family, and I'm the dummy. Well, I even bought dummy books, and I still haven't learned from the dummy books. I have, I have a shelf full of those. <laughs> so, so don't feel bad about that. That the family members, though, I think I threatened to quit feeding them or something, you know, or tell them they have to sit down and show you something before you serve Thanksgiving meal or something like that. Now they're the one that keeps sending me emails. Why haven't you? You know, this is your second notice to put me on the LinkedIn, and I'm going, oh. Yeah, you, you got to just, you know, uh, I know that, sadly, you know, with having the iPhones and everything so readily, people want response immediately and stuff. And that's, you know, when I'm out feeding my cows and stuff like that, I'm outside enjoying my animals. You know, I don't care what emails I'm getting. I don't care what text, you know, that's my time. I enjoy it. So don't don't let the internet and all that kind of stuff stress you out. But do take advantage of it. Use it to your, you know, use it to help market your art. Are, are, are you, do you sell your work? Well, there's nobody wants to buy. <laughs> well, I will tell you, you, you need to get some pictures of it then and get it out there and, and let people see it and participate in shows and, you know, and, and the way to spread the word is, you know, so so I definitely I think it I think talk to one of those grandkids or something and say hey slow it down and help me out here because because it, it really is something that you know you are capable of doing. You know, it's just getting the time to do it and get someone to walk you through it. Yes, ma'am. Well, they say for instance you sell something. Mm -hmm. Do they contact you first? or just through PayPal or... Well, do you have a website? We do. Okay, and so you sell work on your website? Threatened. My husband doesn't want to do the PayPal, so... Okay, do you do the square? He can, yeah. Okay, well, from Facebook, they do have a shop that you can put on your Facebook page. I probably wouldn't do that. I would probably direct the people to your, your website. So post images on your Facebook page and say if you want to see more or if you're interested in the same, you know, go to www.whatever your website is. Then they can then go through your shopping cart there and whatever arrangements you have on there because some folks just say, hey, if you're interested in this, you know, email me for a price and we'll work out arrangements and stuff like that. But, you know, so I would push them to your website where they can see more of your work. As far as if you don't want to do PayPal, I would get the square. You know, I mean, it depends on your website. They, like, my, I'm with Weebly. I built my website through Weebly. And it's a drag and drop. It's very simple. Um, it's inexpensive. If you want something that does all the bells and whistles, Weebly's not your website. But if you just want something basic, they're, they're a good site. And I was able to incorporate the square, because that's what I use at shows. And I was able to just, I mean, they had a thing, click on this, and it automatically plugged it into my website. And so, does everybody know what the square is? No. No. 
Okay. <laughs> that if, if you need to take credit cards, because like uh, before I, you know, I didn't take credit cards. It's like, well, I don't need to, you know. Well, then you, you start getting these shows and it's like everybody's got credit card, credit card, credit card. Or they got $100 bills and I'm standing there with 21s in my pocket, you know, and they want to buy a $2.50 mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. But uh, the square is just, it's a little gadget that you can plug into your phone or you can even key it in. But it allows you to take credit cards and it's 2.75% per transaction. So I, if someone comes out to my house and they want to buy a cow and they want to charge the cow, they can do that. If I'm at a show, they want to buy a milk cart, they can do that. There's no fees involved. That doesn't cost you anything. All it is is a 2.75% per transaction. And they have a wonderful record keeping thing. It emails uh, your customer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll send it'll email you the receipt. So so they're it's a it's a wonderful thing to have. Yes, sir. You don't pay a monthly fee or anything? No, sir. No monthly just fee, that just per transaction. Okay. And, and if you uh, go on this, I think it's www.squareup.com, they'll send you a reader. My readers never work, so I just key in the information. But they'll send you a reader, and you you know go and fill out the paperwork, link it to your uh, bank account. So when I do a sale, uh, the money is in my bank account the next day. And like I do wholesale orders. So it's really nice because, like, I had a lady order cards, Sierra something, California, last week. And so when I went to ship her order, I called her up. She gave me her credit card. I punched it in. It went, said approved. I stuck them in the mail. You know, and just like that, I had money from her. Any final thoughts that you would like to leave us with? <sighs> Don't be intimidated, you know. The, the, just the, and, and if you need help with something, if you have questions, don't hesitate, you know. Give me a call. If I don't answer, I'm feeding cows, but I'll call you back, you know. Because um, I'm happy to help anybody with anything if you need, you know, any questions or anything like that. But, uh. <laughs>
Focused in North St. Louis County, Northside Art Association is a nonprofit 501c3 arts organization that serves local artists through community exposure, networking, education, and peer interaction. Learn more about Northside Art Association at www.northsideartassociation.org.